one's health as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not simply the absence of infirmity. And that's so important because come COVID, we were all sheltering, well not us, we were on the front line, but many people were sheltering and um, you know had to huddle and they couldn't go out and they couldn't see their relatives and people realized how important it was to have that social connection. Many people realized actually I need people. People were going crazy just being in their house. So those people who were unfortunately having to shelter and locked down on their own had no family. So it's not just that you have physical and mental health, but also social well-being. And of course, we're in the house of God today. I want to also add spiritual health. It's very important. So now that we know what excellent health is, I want to ask you know, just share with you what I think that is the importance. I mean, we have a Q&A afterwards. You can share your thoughts. But I thought to myself, so you're born and then you die, you pass on. In between that time, from when you're born to when you're dead, what are you doing with your life? You want to enjoy your life. You don't want to just be here and be ill or have infirmity. You want to actually enjoy that life. And the only reason why you need to have good health is so you can earn a living and provide for your dependents. I mean, I have three children. I can tell you for free, it is not cheap to have children. So obviously you might have the elderly parents, you might have people that you're supporting. Health is well. And the last thing I want to say is to fulfill your destiny. Now, best friend sent me someone. I had something wrong. This Canadian house is in England. We build houses with brick. But you guys make what my daughter calls cardboard houses. So the houses are cardboard houses because they're made of wood. And then you now put a furnace inside the house that's made of wood. And I'm like, how do you even organize and you know, understand this kind of house? And then what happened was I didn't understand the heating. We were having difficulty. And so I said, best friend, help me. So she sent me Jesse. So he came, he did a very good job. He explained to me about how the heat was coming out from here and there and all that. I said to him, did you study this thing? Because he said, no. But I believe that I have a purpose. I believe that I have a role. And this is what I'm doing now. So I put my all into it. And I was so impressed. I said to him, I'm going to speak about it. Even though you're a man, I'm going to a woman's club. I'm going to borrow this thing. And the point is that, why are you, why are you here? Why haven't you died yet? Why is it that that accident spared you, or the pandemic spared you? I think there must be a purpose for you to be here. And those of you who are close to me will know that that was a very bad accident. The worst for 25 years that happened on Remembrance Day. I was going to uh, my practice in the UK, I was in the UK then. Uh, I've been doing the remote, like all those who were working remotely. And my patient said, Dr. Adom, I just want you to see me. I just want you to see this rash. I'm tired of this phone thing. He says, don't worry, I will come into the clinic and I will see you. And to this day, I never saw them because I never got there. I was at the red light waiting to turn and I could just see in my rear view of this big truck, what you guys call a semi here, coming towards me. And the next thing I knew was that I said, it's gonna hit me, it's gonna hit me. And that's the last time I remembered. And then when I came to, the people who were trying to help me and they're trying to let me out. And those people happen to be a medical doctor and a nurse just standing at the pedestrian light. Is that coincidence? And they got to me and said to me, don't worry, you've been in an accident. And I'm just looking at I cannot speak, but I can hear what they're saying. And so, you know, it's, but later on, I learned that um, it was the worst accident in London for 25 years. My car was crushed, it was SUV, it was crushed like a piece of paper. People thought, this person in here, she's dead, and if she's alive, she's crippled. But you can see I walked up here on my own. So I'm neither dead nor crippled. I serve a great God. So the point I'm trying to make is that when you have such things and you're spared, you ask yourself, why am I alive? Why did God spare me? What am I supposed to do with my life? So please, ladies, don't leave here today without thinking, why am I here? Some of you are mothers. Some of you are uh, friends, you are good friends, like my best friend. Some of you are just their colleagues. Some of you are just there to encourage. Some of you are there to pray for others and lift people up. Find out why you're here so your life can have more meaning, more purpose. Next slide, please. So I thought to myself, I have, I have a, a theodor here. So can you just stand up and say hello to everyone? Can you stand up and say hello to everyone? So everyone say hi to Leah Hill. And someone give her a mic, please. Where is my moderator, Dr. Uche? Or oh, someone is coming. Ethel, do you want to tell us how young you are? I am 
family, or come and talk to the physician. So we are here to help you. And I'll be very grateful if you guys can just take a photograph of this particular slide on your phones. Because I want you to share it with people. Many people go through stuff, but they don't say anything. And so what we've done up there is we've put up the Saskatoon Mobile Crisis Intervention Services. It's a free helpline. If you know anyone who's stressed, anyone who's going through stuff, it's all confidential, I'm sure. And I also put a link to one of the YouTube videos I did with um, uh, Pastor Glory, who is the uh, director of the Saskatoon Indian Institute of Technology. And she has a passion for helping people in this as well. So basically, mental health is something that's very dear to me personally. I don't take it lightly. I speak a lot about that's why I got my award in the UK for, for teaching medical students about mental health. And I've done lots of videos, I've done a TV series about mental health. Do not suffer. The bottom line is to speak. When you speak, it loses power over you. And don't be ashamed. It's really Christians. When they say, oh, I'm a Christian, I should have joy, I shouldn't be depressed. I mean, even Jesus wept, so that means he was not happy. And then the Bible talks about Elijah that said, God, just kill me now. So these things are there, but you've got to actually just seek help and speak up. Next slide, please. So, excellent health. I'm going to give you two tips. If you remember nothing, you have that slide. Remember these two tips. Your first tip is to present early. Present early. And the reason I say that is because when you have something wrong with you, do not let it fester. I'll tell you a case of one of my patients in the UK when I'm talking in the addictions clinic. The nurse came and called me and said to me, this lady has a boil on her breast. Can you give her antibiotics? And I thought, breast and boil, I knew she hadn't had a baby. So I thought, let me go and have a look. This is something I've only seen twice in my career, for gating breast cancer. She had a breast cancer that had become so bad, it had come out of the breast, and was now like a very ugly lesion. And that's what we call a fungating breast cancer. And this woman was saying that she had a boil, and she just wanted antibiotics. And I said to her, it's no boil, you've got to go away. And she refused, because she had mental health, she was scared of the hospital. So the point is, present early, that's my first tip. If you see something wrong with you, you have a boil, you have a skin which is really because of you are fair skinned. You have a skin which that keeps coming over and over again, and you do not check it out. That could be squamous cell carcinoma. I'm not trying to scare you, but I think it's, I feel like it's my duty to people to sort of tell people these things because people sometimes don't know. Or sometimes they think it's going to go, it's going to pass. But I tell you that sometimes it gets worse. But if you at least come to us, we can say, oh, don't worry, that's fine. Or we can say, oh, actually, let's watch it or let's do something. So that's my advice, present early. Come early with whatever it is that's worrying you. And then, where do you present to? Where do you go to? So the Canadian healthcare. So in Canada, the healthcare system is what's called the universal healthcare system. That means that the government, Justin Trudeau and those in Ottawa, <laughs> are paying for you to have access to a family physician, a doctor, to imaging, to x-rays, labs, what have you. That's what they're paying for. They're not paying for you to get a counselor. They're not paying for you to see a physio or chiro. And they're not paying for you to have your dentist work or to, they don't pay for your prescriptions. I mean, in the UK, we get most of that free. So that's why the UK is, you know, people like to go there for health, right? So if your family physician has to deal with all these problems, because nobody else wants to go to anybody else because they have to pay, this is why there's so much pressure on family physicians. This is why you cannot see us the way you would like to see us. I just thought I'd just explain that. But well, having said that, you will still get seen as long as you are patient. That is why people are called patients. Because you have to be patient. If something is wrong with you and you want to present early, you need to just go. Because as you can see on this slide here, Canadian healthcare today is in trouble. This is just a snapshot of, I just put that slide, it's a very busy slide. This is a snapshot of what's happening in Canadian healthcare today. There is no access. The one from CTV 2022 September says, Six million Canadians do not have a GP. They do not have a family physician. But those that do enjoy better health than those that don't. The reason being, the patient said, was because they had someone they could go to and talk about their problems to. But those that didn't have anybody couldn't go. But don't forget, I've also told you that you have a universal healthcare system. So that means that you can go and see any doctor. So even though this lady, lovely people here, many of them are mine, I'm, I'm responsible for them, but I also look after people who I don't even know. So people come into our work in Rashford, you know, 
they're coming to a walking and say, can I just see a doctor? And Vashti is very good at helping people, people who don't even, I don't even know. She just says to me, can you see them? They need a cab, they need something to do. And I just fit them in if I have the space. So you just have to try and get help. You know that it's free, you know it's available. Don't sit there and say, oh, I'm gonna be waiting for hours. You wait for hours anyway if you go to a game, and you wait for hours anyway if you go to the, we went to SAS S last year. I never spent so many hours queuing for rides. We queued and queued and queued, and we're the rides for seconds and we're off. But we, we did it because we were looking forward to, my kids wanted to go on all the roller coasters and all that stuff. So I was with them and we had to queue. So this is your health. Your health is wealth, as somebody said earlier. So you've got to be patient and just get help. So this is what you're, I want you to know what's available to you. Yes, you can see a family physician. Yes, you may have to wait, but you can do and it is free. And spare it all for those, say, in Africa, who do have to pay. So I think people in Canada should really, really take a veil of this. And that brings me to my main point, my main, my bugbear with, with why I do these talks for free is because I want people to know this second tip. Prevention is better than cure. You've got to know that the best thing is not to have to see me. The best thing is not to have to see any doctor. The best thing is to stay well. So you're born, normally most people are born well, only a few babies have congenital malformations. Most people are born well. You want to stay well on your journey till God calls you home, or you die, or whatever it is that you want to call it, pass away. But prevention better than kill. And can you just tell me, so Ethelda Moore stole the show when she said, next slide please, prevention better than kill. Your goal, she said, God has blessed me when I do my part. My, do my part. Another thing she didn't tell you that she does, you will just tell us your fitness regime. Where is that microphone again? Can someone give her the mic so we can all hear what she has to say? I mean, don't you want to live to be 90 next thing? <laughs> so you better listen to the experts. I haven't lived that long. So she's going to tell us. So what do you do in terms of your, you were telling me some things that made me so happy I said you have to come here today. What is it that you do to stay healthy? You said you had a role. What do you do? Oh, I would say, what do I do? I do many things, but I would say, um, for exercise, I uh, I walk every day, as they say. Well, I try to walk, walk at least an hour. And then I stay, it can be longer. That's a day without wind. And then, as I say, I do regular exercises every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 10 to 11. I uh, have gone to yoga. I uh, have taken other exercise things. So um, I try to keep active. I go to the stairs rather than take an elevator anywhere. I go the stairs most of the time, and uh, I just try to get fresh air. Oh yes, and I did have some high chi to exercise in my gym. So I just, I just keep myself busy. I mean, I always sit for a time being, and I get up and walk for a while, and whatever. And, uh, Thank you so much. Uh, as far as my diet is. I try to um, basically I like my vegetables, I like my fruit, I have some protein, I have a bit of meat, eggs, different things like that. Uh, I have a very simple breakfast with fiber breakfast. I love my shredded meat and uh, to say that and then I sprinkle on ground. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very much. So I think she's, you know, she's setting all um, to stay healthy. Prevention is better than cure. You are the driver of your own body. Your goal is diet, and the best diet is not the seafood diet, as an S E E food. <laughs> My patient said to me, "I want the seafood." I'm like, "Oh, that's nice." She said, "No, I need S E E. I just see it and I eat it." You don't want to be doing that. So you want to have a nice diet, you love your veg like the other does. Don't have too much on your plate, so portion sizes, 
Many times we go to America on holiday, we like to go to America on holiday. When we do, we only eat twice a day because they give you so much. Like, oh, you're so full. So portion sizes. Alcohol, I know you guys like a liquor here. So 14 units a week, that's what they, they, they recommend. And we have verses of scripture that just tell them that, you know, don't do anything in excess. Rest. I remember my husband saying to me once, oh, why are you just sitting down? Look at all the things that need to be done. And I said to him, even though good Lord rested on the Sabbath day, and so I shall rest. I'm just a bare woman. So that got me off that. So rest is important. Make sure you take out time, refresh, drink water, fluids. Remember your vaccinations. Vaccinations are one of the best things that has come out of the public health and medicine. Prevent you from guessing. I know there's a lot of controversy about COVID, but I will put COVID vaccines on there because the jury is still out on that. We still you know, we haven't done that for many years. But things like the shingles, the flu, jab, pneumonia, these are established vaccines, the childhood vaccines for your little ones. And if you're a smoker, smoking cessation, that's so important because there's so many cancers. I can't think of a cancer that's not linked to smoking. Almost all the cancers, smoking is one of the factors. And the last thing I want to say about your goal is to let go of worry and offense, to pass to your care. Because, you know, like I say in life, something's bound to go wrong. I mean, even this morning, I got a message on Facebook. I found very offensive, right? And I just thought I was so, I said, I'm coming here to speak of offense. I think I'm getting my practice, right? So you've got to let go of worry and offense and cast your care to the Lord because he does care for you. And the next one, which is my main slide, is what I want to talk about the most is my role to help you. So many of you come, you register with doctors. What we do for you to help you maintain good health is the annual health check. Now this health check is free, like I said, and it's once a year. So make the most of it. And when I say make the most, it doesn't mean bring all your problems of the whole year to that one appointment. Because most doctors will just be giving you 20 minutes. Normally it's 10 minutes per patient, but that one is 20. And what we're doing there is we're asking you, how are you? How are things with you? What's going on? Physical problems, mental problems, any stresses, things like that. We talk about that briefly. We already have a checklist of things we need to ask you. So, you know, we already have some things to ask you. We don't have anything to say. So please don't bring very long list to that. But when we do all that, the nurses will have done your blood pressure, taking your weight and how just to measure your body mass index. And then we now start the exam. And this is really complete. It's head to toe. So I'm starting your head, your ears, your, you know, going, especially for children, your throat, this thing, feeling your lymph nodes going all the way down. If you want to have a breast check, I do. And I also teach my patients to check their own breasts. And unfortunately, last night I was working, about 7.38, I got the results of the patient I saw a few days before. I examined her, I said, there's a breast lump here. She had no idea. I said, I'm gonna send you for a scan and the results came back yesterday evening and they said it's probably cancer. I did not have the heart to call her. I said to myself, this is gonna be her last weekend as a cancer-free patient. I'm not gonna spoil it. I just referred her on and I will speak to her next week in person. I'll get her to come in and talk to her face to face. Because I'd already gone home, I was just working and doing all my results. So these things are real. Me just, I've been here 20 months, I've already picked up five cancers. And these are because those people bothered to come. One was sent to me. If you don't check, you wouldn't know. I mean, there's no point in being afraid. Oh, well, some people say, I never see because I never check. But the thing is, if you check and you find out early, then something can be done. I have a very good friend of mine. I don't think she'll mind me saying this. I sent her the YouTube video I did because part of my health promotion is, you know, also doing little uh, YouTube videos. So I demonstrated the breast check. And I sent her the video. I didn't realize I sent it to her twice. And she thought, why is mommy sending this thing to me twice? She's not normally a scaremonger. So she checked, and lo and behold, it was a lump. So she ran me on a Friday evening on a long, what you guys call a long weekend, they call it a bank holiday. So immediately she said it's me, I knew this was cancer. This lady, her situation was not very good. And I didn't know what to say to her. I said, oh, don't worry, let's just wait until the doctors see you on Tuesday. That's going to be a long weekend. It was the longest weekend ever. Unfortunately, she didn't have cancer, but it was picked up at a state where something could be done. She's alive today, we thank God. But the problem is, she was being nudged. She told me later, something was telling me, check, check, check. And she didn't listen. So when I sent her the video, because I like to send my videos to everybody, those of you who get it will know, and I sent another one. She said, why did you send it to me twice? 
and that's when she checks. So what could have been a stage one ended up being a stage two. So you have to be very careful. And also pap tests as well. So pap tests is how we check for cervical cancer. It's not the same as having a sexual health screen, it's different. And that's from the age of 21. So if you're younger than that, we probably wouldn't be doing that unless you've been having intercourse from such a young age. Now when you get to the age of 50, that's when you go for your mammogram. So this lady who I saw, I'm just talking about yesterday case, she's not 50. So she wouldn't have been picked up if she was waiting for the routine. She's much younger than I think she's 40, so I can't remember, but she's definitely nowhere near 50. So if she hadn't come in, she would never have known. And that's the point I'm making. And also the next test, the feet test, that's what you guys call the poop test. The government is so kind to you. They send it to you in the post. Some people say, oh my God, I put it in the bin. Don't put it in the bin. Put some poo in there and post it back to the government. They ask for poo, you give them poo. <laughs> Let them check it. Let them tell you. I had a lady who, yeah, who came in less than 40. In the UK, they wouldn't even do the test on her. They say she's too young. But she has colon cancer. Now she's had surgery, she's had this, she's had that, she's had that. And she has young children. So these things I'm telling you are just real stories so that you realize that these things do happen. And what I said earlier about the fulfilling your destiny, just imagine you had a great commission on your head. Maybe there was something great you had to do. And then you just died. What happens? It's gone, isn't it? That's the end of it. You say, oh, she used to be, or he was, like Michael Jackson with Houston. They all died at the 50s, right? They had such great music, with music and film, and we were all enjoying the entertainment that these people gave to us. But they just died suddenly, and that was the end of them. We don't really hear their music or their stories. We hear it initially when they die. I'm talking about people who want to be the next person, right? So if you don't want your story to end prematurely, if you want to keep on going for long years, like Ethelda and those who are other people like her, you've got to turn up for this check. It's so important, and please tell your friends. And then when you get to 65, we check for bone density, which is for osteoporosis. Now, she says she walks a lot a day. That is how you don't get osteoporosis. Osteoporosis happens to every woman who is 50 and over. Whether you know it or not, you are getting brittle bones once she gets to 50 because you no longer have estrogen. So your bones are getting, you're breaking down more than you're building, whether you know it or not. It doesn't show you may be big, but your bones are getting brittle unless you're calcium and vitamin D and you are walking. It's only walking, the weight bearing, walk, 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 walk. The weight bearing is what keeps those bones strong for anybody over 50. And so you know I don't joke with my walks. I will always go, come, rain or high water, even the snow, I put on my snow boots and I go out and walk. It's so important. And the thing that we do, which a walking doctor can do for you, is an annual labs. I mean, it doesn't hurt. I saw somebody in the walking the other day, oh doctor, I don't have a doctor. I like to know how I'm, you know, how I'm driving, how my body is. Can I just have some tests? And that's what I did. We just give her a form. We check your liver, we check your kidney, we check your diabetes, we check. Some people even have diabetes until I told them. We check your, your cholesterol. I didn't know I had high cholesterol, so my doctor checked mine. I thought mine was normal. But when I checked, it was high. It's high because I have a lot of the good cholesterol, so that made my numbers high. But at least I didn't know I thought it was fine. So I found out myself. We check your thyroid, we do your vitamin levels, things like that. So we do a lot for you. And so please, 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 your three tips. And I remember what was the first tip? Team, team, team wisdom. Which one is team wisdom? Team wisdom. <laughs> Present early, yeah? What was the second tip? Oh, my team's got it, yay! We got two points. Present early, prevention is better than cure. And then, I want you to also remember, if you haven't made your annual health check, can you make one? You know, have you ever seen someone that has a nice, you, you guys have like big cars here, right? You don't have all this like, um, Ferraris, or maybe they do, I haven't seen them, but, in the UK, you have these people who are really rich, and then they have these nice um, sports cars, and Ferrari, Porsches, you know, all those sort of nice cars. We had the BMW Sports once, and when my husband drives BMW Sports, he takes it like, I have to protect this car, you know? He parks it very near the edge, no other car can brush him. You know, UK streets are quite narrow. He doesn't let anyone corner him, he'll just give you room. He's doing that to make sure that his car doesn't have a problem because it's a very expensive as a sports car. But at the end of the way, is that car today? That car is on the scrap heap. We maintain the car. After one is a car, right? At the end of the day, you need to change for another car. The car I was in when I was in the accident, that's crushed. That was also a very nice car. 
People look after their cars. Well, your body is your car carrying you. Your body is your car. Because I'm a doctor, when I was in the UK, my, one of my roles was the old age home. I was a physician for, I like, I like elderly people, I like them, so I was happy to go after them. I was doing two homes at one point, and then when they die, because it's old age, right? What's going to happen next year when they die? So they, when they die, they call me, because I'm the doctor, they cannot take the body until I say this person is dead. So I come, and someone who I've just seen last week, they say she's dead, or I saw the day before me in the wardrobe, say this person is now dead. What made that person dead? I go to them, I put my stethoscope on their heart, no heartbeat. I observe their chest, no rise. I look at their eyes, pupils fixed. This body is still there, but the spirit has left. Your body is your car. Your body is what is taking you through life. If your body is not looked after, it will end, it will die. And there goes your story. You'll be, you know, you were here and then you were gone. And that will be it. So if we can look after our cars, which as I said, the car will get old anyway and will need to be replaced. How much more this car, this body that your car is carrying you, you've got to look after it. Is that, it's not a bad thing that you're looking after your health. Can we just move on to the next slide please? So I can move on from this topic. I think I've made the point. And I'm just going to end with a few stories. Like I always think Jesus told stories, we remember them. So I'm going to come up with medicine and just give you some stories. So healthy biblical women, we all know these women. We know Ruth. It's only this is what do you want to miss the trick here? This is a very romantic story. So Ruth is a Moabites. She comes to um, uh, she comes back to Israel with Naomi, her mother-in-law. And verse 2 says, she said to her elderly mother-in-law, let me go and find work so that we can eat. And then in verse 7, the owner of the field comes in and says, who is this new girl walking on my field? Did we employ someone new? Oh, that's Ruth. She came with her mother-in-law from work and she has worked from morning till night and she hasn't stopped except to take a short break. So, mm, let her work. And then, as romantic stories go, you can guess what happened. She, he marries her. And so she becomes from servant to mistress of the field. All because what? She was working. She was working, she didn't take a break. If she had come and said, who is that person? Oh, she's just there lying down, she's so tired, she can't even do any work. He's not gonna be very impressed by her. Those of you who own a business or who are employers, you know, when you have a staff that does well, or you have a student that does well, you know, you're always so happy with them. And it's the same thing. So, you know, work hard, and when she worked hard, and she obviously got her reward. And the next lady on the list was, um, I believe, who was next to me? Can I have that slide back again? Oh, Deborah, oh yes. So Deborah was a judge. So in Israel, at one point, they had no, um, they had no leaders, right? After Joshua died, so they were all just doing their own thing. And God would just send them help when they cry, God, help me. God is always with you. Cry for help, he will help you. So he sent them a judge. Of all the judges, only one was a woman, and her name was Deborah. And her uh, claim to fame was that God told her, Deborah, tell Barak, to raise an army of 10,000 so that they can go and fight the people who are. And Barak is a guy. He told him to raise an army. He said, I'm not going to go unless you come with me. He said, Okay, I'll come. But if I come, glory will go to a woman and not to a man. He said, Can't be bothered, whatever, come. So she went. And this is not the kind of war we're hearing about in the news, where they have armor and they have, you know, all this. Yeah, Special equipment. She's walking. She had to walk down. She's carrying her bag. Maybe she was in her period. We don't know. Maybe she was going to the battle balls. And she was going for war. A woman walking about. And in the end, they got the victory. And that's why we remember her today. So people like to name their kids Ruth or Deborah, all those women. And the last lady on my list was Mary. So Mary, the mother of Jesus. Obviously a very anointed lady, but she was a very young woman. God chose her to be his um, helper, to bring, bring forth his son. And what did Mary do? The Bible says that it was not many days hence when they went back, a journey of 90 miles, like going from Saskatoon to say, PA, 90 miles journey. She had to go on foot or by donkey, and she got there, and, and is my time off? No. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so Mary, the mother of Jesus, she had excellent health. Many people who are pregnant cannot even walk 90 miles. She went 90 miles, either by walking or by donkey. 
she got there and she gave birth to Jesus with no help. So that's healthy women. And then the afflicted women, we know about the woman with the issue of blood, we know about Rachel. Rachel died and her son didn't have any guidance. We see how he gets on talking and missing his destiny, or not missing it, but getting into trouble and being hated because he kept talking so much. His mother was alive, I think she was guiding him really better. The woman with the issue of blood. But the thing about this woman is that they met with Jesus and they had a touch. I think I'm going to end there because I am just a doctor. One day I will retire. We have a great physician, Jesus. And the Bible says that where two or three come together in his name, there he is in our midst. And so let's just have a word of prayer and just pray to God and ask God to help us. Maybe today you've come and something I've said I've run through. Maybe the doctor's giving you a very bad diagnosis and you're worried. Maybe, you know, you have a friend, a relative who you care about. Let's just ask God to help us. We're just going to have a word of prayer. Pastor Messi, please, can you pray for us?
not like a fact or like is it something that people are just saying just to spread their fear among each other? So that's an excellent question. So what you're talking about is you're talking about general genes. So diabetes, there are two main types. There's type one. Type one, yes, is in the family line. But type two is what I just described a few minutes ago, where you're too big and your body doesn't have enough insulin to help you out. So that one, if you lose weight, you'll be cured. And that doesn't go to your gene pool, and that's not going to affect your kids if they are healthy. But if it's type one, yes, you probably will get it. But nothing is a given, because don't forget, when we talk about children, it's two people coming together, so they have a gene pool from each side. So you might not get the gene for that. But yes, yeah, some things are hereditary for sure. And if you do, that's another thing about coming from the checkup. Because I always go through the history of my patients. What is your family history? So I like, know things. The reason I did that uh, breast um, scan for that lady, she told me her mother had died of breast cancer. So when I examined her breast, I felt a lump. I thought, hmm, breast lump, you're overweight, you've been on the pill. I just said to her, you have too many alarm bells ringing in my head. I, get, I, told her, I told her that. I said to her, I need to just check this, and we are where we are. You have a question? Oh, yes. So thank you so much. I have the references I uh, put up as well. Uh, thanks for listening, and uh, many thanks to Chidi and, uh, and my dear Chine Cherum, who have been doing my media for me. And uh, please keep in touch. I like subscribers. I don't get paid, but I like to get paid by subscribers. So please, 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 can I have my YouTube channel back on? That's my pandemic hobby. During the pandemic, I, I did a video which I heard went viral. Unfortunately, I wasn't on YouTube then. It's a bit late to the boat. Uh, but since then, I'm, I'm trying to do the video just to educate people. A breast, breast exam you can find on my on the YouTube video. Mental health topics you can find on there. Things I do for fun as well, like I went fishing. You know, she went to, you guys went to, what do you guys do? You went to boxing? Absolutely. So when they do fun things, I put that on us. It's not just about medicine, it's not, it's not that boring. But if you ever have any, the reason I do that is because my patients come and they say, I know I'm finishing now. I'll, let, I'll end with this. Patients go and do a Google search, right? They put their symptoms in Google. And in a visit, they come and tell me, and Google said you have cancer. And Google said you are going to die. So. Please, 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 rather than going and dying before your time just from bad news that's not even true, come to my website or my YouTube page and get reliable, non scary advice. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Did we enjoy this? Yes. Can we give a better part of it? We thank God for this opportunity. And everybody who came here today, you're blessed because you're getting first-hand information from someone who is knowledgeable in an area. And then, we're also getting God's blessings, which is overall and total. So it's like, from every angle, we're getting blessings. We thank God. Um, Dr. Mani, thank you so much for giving us your time. And you know, putting some acts to it. Sometimes you just listen to these things on radio, TV, or have people talk about it, but they don't add life to it, you know? Most times when you add some practical things to what you theorize, it makes a lot of sense. And it sinks better. So thank you so much for that. We thank God. So now we're getting to the next thing. We're going to have offering. But as we're having the offering... Little bit I've got to make a change. I don't care. If I break, at least I'll be feeling something just okay. It's not enough. Help me fight through the nothing.